Okay, so here's a um, fifth example for the compression member design. So this will be the last example in the, in the series for compression member design. And this one is to calculate the buckling resistance of a, a T section. So this T section is cut, cut from a universal beam. So it's a 312 by uh, 267 by UK uh, T, 110 kilograms per meter in terms of its mass uh, from grade S275 steel. It's a top. Um, core member of a truss and it's got a length of three meters. So that's the cross section shape there on the on the screen. Okay. So we're gonna uh, design this. So it's very similar design steps to what we did for the angle section. So we're gonna follow that through, but there's just one more complication in this one, I suppose, just in terms of the section we picked. It's a class four section that's gonna uh, allow us to have require us to have to work out what the effective area is. So no matter what the cross section was, if it came out to be a class four section, we'd have to use an, an effective cross section area. So that's what I want to introduce into this example. Uh, that's a class four section. And um, unlike the equal angle section, the equal angle section was symmetrical about the U axis. So about the major axis, this one's symmetrical about the about the minor axis. So the Z axis down through here. So it's symmetrical about the Z axis. So it just slightly changes the, uh, the formulas in there, but not, not, not nothing major. Okay, so we'll follow this uh, step by step through. Uh, so the very first thing is uh, classification section. So you'll see in the slides what I've done is I've just taken the extracts out from various different parts of the of the code and the guidance. So we're designing it to your code uh, three. Um, we use the blue book um, to get the classification section or the official MP three six three steel uh, building design the, the design data. Okay, so. Um, so we're using the UKT section. We've got the, the different um, dimensions here, dimensional properties in it, and then the distance down from the top of the flange down to the neutral axis here, CY. So I'm going to uh, write out these so that we take note of these because we want these uh, dimensions for, for later on. So the section that we have is a 312 by 267 by 112. Uh, and it's cut, as I said, from a, a universal beam section. So that universal beam section that it's cut from is a 533, 312, and 219. So effectively, uh, cut it down to the halfway down on the length of the web um, in there. So you get two T sections out of one universal um, beam section. Okay, so what do we, uh, what, what properties will we need that, that are going to be important from here? Well, let's take all of these down. So um, B, H, and so on. Uh, so B, so from the blue book. Okay, so we've got uh, B is uh, 317.4 millimeters. Look at the height of the section, 280.4 millimeters. Thickness of the web is 18.3 uh, millimeters. Thickness of the flange, 29.2 millimeters. Um, the root radius, I don't know if we need it, we'll take it down on here, 12.7 millimetres. The dimension down to the uh, neutral axis, CY, is 6.09 centimetres. Second moment value at the major axis is 8530 centimetres per four. And about the minor axis uh, is equal to. 7790 centimeters for 40. So you see the stiffness about the major minor axes aren't that different, uh, not a huge difference, unlike a universal uh, beam where there's significant difference. And actually, sorry, we need to get the ratios for local buckling. Important. So we classify the sections. Ratios for local buckling. So that's the, for the flange, the one stiff length of the flange times the thickness of the flange is equal to 5.43 and done stiffen into the web divided by the thickness of the web is equal to 15.3. Okay, so we've got um, all those dimensions that we need, all the proper the dimensional properties uh, for, for the member. So that's the first thing we do. So we'll go to the blue book and get those out. Um, so we saw there that the thickness of the flange uh, was equal to 29.2 uh, millimeters. 
and that's less than or equal to 40 millimeters. And the grade of steel is S275, as we're given in the question. So table 3.1, which is this table here on this on the screen, table 3.1 in Euro code 3, part 1, part 1, implies that FY, so for S275, FY is going to be 275 newtons per millimeter squared. And in case we need it, the ultimate strength is 430 newtons per millimeter squared. Okay, so it's going to help us for classifying the section. So we've got an FY. Um, so then on to uh, table 5.2. So table 5.2 is going to give us the maximum width to thickness ratios for the compression flange. Now, uh, it's a T-section, so we don't see any picture of a T-section here, but it's it's like an I-section, um, but it's cut in half. Um, and if we look at sheet 2 of 3 of table 5.2, it's for an outstand flange. So in other words, a flange that is out on its own, so I'd like to see here. But that'll also work for the actual web as well, because the web isn't continuous; it's not a it's not a, uh, a member on either end. So, so both of them. This is the same table that we use for both the, the flange and, and the web uh, in there. Okay, so we know that. Uh, so we said that F Y is equal to two hundred seventy-five uh, newtons per millimeter squared, and then we have epsilon value is the square root of uh, 235 over FY, which is the square root of 230, 235 over 275. And that's equal to 0.92. Okay, so we can see that actually down here in the bottom of the table. Uh, 0.92 of table uh, 5.2. So that from table 5.2. Okay, so that's epsilon. Um, now we look at the, the, the ratio. So we need C over T to be less than or equal to 14 epsilon to be class 3. If it's greater than 14 epsilon, it's going to be a class 4 section. So first we can look at the flange. We have CF in the flange over TF in the flange. And from the blue book, we, got, uh, we took that down. Has been 5.43, uh, and that's actually going to be less than equal to 9 times epsilon, which is less than equal to 9 times 0.92. Uh, um, so it's 81, and it's 81, uh, 81, so it's 82. So 8.28. Uh, so that implies that it's a, it's a class one section. Okay. Because it's less than nine epsilon here. And that means it's a class one section. Okay. And then for the web. So for the web, from the blue book, we got the uh, done stiffened length of the web um, divided by the thickness of the web um, was equal to. 15.3. Okay, so that's actually going to be greater than 14 epsilon. So it's greater than 14 times 0.92. So that implies it's a class uh, 4, so class 1, not uh, section, class 1 flange. We've got a class 4 web. And then that, oh, that means it's a class 4 uh, section overall. Because it's whichever is the lower the two of them. Section overall. Okay, so we've classified the section, so that's the very first step that we do. Once we classify the section, um, so it's a class four section because it's if it's less than or equal to 14 epsilon, as for table 5.2, it's class three, but we're uh, greater than that, uh, so we're a class four section overall. So then we go to um, clause 6.4. Six six point two point four uh, in in nineteen ninety three part one part one. Okay, uh, and we've got a class four section, so we've got a class four section. So therefore, we're going to go to uh, equation uh, six eleven. So equation six eleven tells us that for the design resistance, 
uh, of, a, of a compression member is uh, going to be uh, the effective cross-section area times FY, all divided by the partial factor safety. So here we have to work out what the effective cross-section area is going to be. Okay, so it's uh, equation six and seven. So we have to go to, um, so close. So down here, um, uh, so 6.2.4 at the bottom here, it says in the case of the unsymmetric class four section method that should be allowed for not due to the interest of the other things. So we have a, we have actually a symmetrical class four section or at least symmetrical about, about one axis. Okay, and then if we actually go to uh, clause 6.2.2.5, that will tell us uh, that the effective cross section area uh, we need to use uh, EN 1993, part one, part uh, five, to determine. The eccentricity value, the eccentricity value that uh, because um, the load uh, might not be passing through the centroid at the end. Okay, that's the eccentricity value that gives us the uh, this nominal mode. Okay, that's what I would uh, tell us to do. Okay. Well, if we go to the blue book, uh, so if we go to the blue book, oh, sorry, just give me this. So we go to the blue book, um, and we go to close uh, our section 4.2 in the blue book. That will tell us that the effective area, so it's given us a nice formula for the effective area, uh, it's going to be equal to the area minus. Uh, two times the thickness of flange until one minus rho times f times the unstiffened length of the flange. So cf minus uh, thickness of the web times uh, one minus rho times w in this case uh, times the unstiffened length of the, of the web. Okay. So actually, the first thing what you see in the blue book is that there's uh, the formula is for the UB section, and it's area minus four times the thickness of the flange. But because we have only one flange, because it's a T section, that becomes minus two times the thickness of flange in there. And that's the formula is it's the same. Okay, so we can get the thickness of the flange. We have that. We have CF, uh, CW. We can get those relatively easily. But these row values. So where do we get the row values? So uh, where uh, row F and row W uh, are given in uh, EN 1993, part one, part uh, five, clause 4.4. 4. Okay, so that's where we have to go to. So we go there, which I have that in this, uh, up on this page. Um, so this is clause 4.4, so just take note that no, we're now going into the other code, uh, EN 1993, part 1, part 5. Okay, we were in uh, part 1, part 1, now we're into part 1, part 5. Uh, and this gives us the effective cross-section um, area. So we need to basically multiply the cross-section area uh, by uh, some sort of reduction factor in there. So we, have, we want to re multiply um, uh, our reduction factor here. These are the reduction factors that we're going to take into account using this formula here. So there's a reduction factor here. Uh, so we're going to have the overall crack section area. So what it is basically, we can get that straight from the blue book. We're going to reduce it down that's related to some sort of reduction factors uh, related to the flange and some sort of reduction factor that's related to the, the, the web. And obviously if that reduction factor is equal to one, in other words, we're not going to reduce it. One minus one is zero, so that cancels out that uh, component. Or if the reduction factor of the web was one, uh, one minus one is zero, and that cancels out that. So that kind of makes makes sense. Um, so we're, which reduction factor we're we going to use? So we've got an internal compression element. So that'll be like a web in a in a um, in an I section. 
uh, whereas we have outstanding, outstanding uh, compression elements. And that's what we have both the web and the flange because they're, they're a kind of cantilever type of a plate um, in there. So we're going to use uh, these expressions for both the web and the flange. So equation 4.3 in uh, EN 1993, part one, part, uh, part five. So that's what we're going to use. Okay, so, so for uh, outstand uh, element, so we'll go to equation 4.3 in your code uh, 3.1 part 5, so put that in uh, subscript 5, and tell us that rho is equal to 1. Um, for this normal sentence of the plate, so whatever part of the plate is, is less than or equal to 0 0.748. And rho is equal to the plate sentence minus 0.188 divided by the plate normal sentence squared for plate. No less than this greater than 0.748. Okay, and that's uh, where this plate sentence value is equal to the square root of Fy over the critical length or credit. So it's basically the nominal yield strength divided by the critical um, yield uh, critical uh, strength of it, uh, which can look similar to the previous ones. Uh, and then that also can be wrote as a slenderness value. Um, so slenderness value divided by a normal slenderness value, or sorry, reference slenderness value. So in this case, the reference slenderness value is 28.4 epsilon times the rate square root of k. So, okay, so it's kind of what we, similar kind of um, shape formulas to what we had before, a nominal uh, strength or cross-section strength divided by a buckling strength, a critical elastic buckling strength. That's a normal slenderness value of r is slenderness divided by reference slenderness value. So it's kind of similar type shape of, um, of formulas what we've be, what we used to do for working out the slenderness values. Okay, so we need to work work that out. Um, then what is this k tau value? So the k tau, so we, we need to uh, go to uh, table, um, what's the table 4.2? Get us what the tau value is. Okay, so down here uh, tells us for uh, for plates. Now we're going to go to table four two. Okay, so if we go to table four two, this table four two because it's for outstand compression flange. So table four will be for an internal compression flange, and. Um, Basically, we need to look at what the phi value is. The phi is the stress from on one side divided by the stress on the other side. So on the smaller one divided by the bigger one. Uh, and so if we have constant stress across it, then we get a one value and we get a buckling factor of uh, 0.43. So that's what we'll put in here. We'll assume that it's uh, constant uh, stress across it uh, with a 0.43 uh, value. So uh, for phi equals one implies k so equals 0.43. Uh, okay. So what else is in, in, in that form? So we have uh, we know what phi is. So b b uh, b with a, a bar on top of b bar. What does b bar mean? Well, if we get a look over what the code suggests, so b bar is a pro, a pro, appropriate width to be taken as follows: uh, bw for the webs. B for the internal flange elements, B minus um, um, 3T for flanges uh, and RHSs, uh, C for outstanding flanges, uh, H for uh, equal legs, and H for unequal legs. Okay, so, um, so I think in this case we should take it as uh, C for outstanding flanges because that's what we're that's what we designed for. So, so that's the one we're going to use. Okay, so that implies. Uh, that uh, the normal slenderness value for the plate is equal to C over T divided by 28.4 times epsilon. 
so the epsilon value is the 0.92 that we worked out previously times the square root of 0 0.43. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So what? So then, if we have a, um, we have to check this now for the for the flange and for the web. So for the flange. The normal sentence value for the flange is going to be the C of the flange divided by the thickness of the flange. 1 over 28.4 times 0.92 times the square root of 0.43. And that's CF over TF. Now we've got that previously from the blue book. Here it is there from the blue book. It's 5.43. Straight out of the blue book, 5.43. Put 5.43 above the line there. Uh, we'll get an ordinary sentence value uh, back out there as 0.313, and that's less than or equal to 0.748. So that implies that we're going to take the row for the flange is equal to 1. Okay, so that's the flange done. And then for the web. The web, or this value for the web. Uh, so you have CW now over T, so this is going to be CW over TW. Again, over the same stuff from the bottom 28.4 times 0.92 times uh, 0.4, square root 0.43. And that uh, CW over TW, again, we got that from the uh, blue book. 15.3 and 15.3 above the line and that will give us a value out for the normal in this value of the web of 0.884 okay which is greater than uh, 0.748 Okay, so it's greater than 0.748. So what does that tell us? If it's greater than 0.748, we said if it's greater than 0.748, now we have a row value here that we have to calculate uh, for, okay, which is the enormous sinus value of the plate, which in this case is 0.884 for the, web, um, for the web, minus 0.188 divided by normal sinus values as squared. So we'll, we'll work that out. So let's just do this on this page here on the right hand side of this page. Okay, so what is it? So the row of the web is the reduction factor for the for the web. So it's the normal sinus value of the web minus 0.188 divided by the normal sinus value of the web squared. We just worked out normal sinus value is 0.884 minus 0.188 divided by 0.884 squared. It's going to go to 0 0.890. So that's the reduction factor. And then back to the formula from the from the blue book, the effective area is going to be the area minus twice the thickness of the flange times 1 minus rho of the flange times the unstiffened length of the flange uh, minus the thickness of the web times 1 minus rho of the web times CW. Okay. Um, so the cross section area we can get straight from the out of the blue book, which is thirteen thousand nine hundred millimeters squared, or it's one hundred thirty nine centimeters squared in the blue book. Just changing it to millimeters twice. Thing is, the flange is twenty nine point two millimeters. And one minus in this case is rho f. We've got as one, and I can just see f there because that's obviously going to go to zero on that side. Minus uh, the thickness. 18.8, uh, 1 minus, and then row w, in this case, is 0.89, which we just worked out there above. Uh, and cf, what's well, cf? Uh, could be, well, I'm going to get cf uh, in there. So I have in the tables, um, oh, sorry, that's cf, that's C, yeah, cf, cw, sorry, this is one cw. So I'm going to get cw. Well, I know that um, 
uh, CW over TW is 15.3. So I multiply that 15.3 and, multi and then multiply by the thickness of the web, which is 18.3. Then I get C I'll get CW out of it, yeah? Because I have CW over TW. Uh, multiply by TW itself, take them out, and I've got TW there. So I've got 15.3. So that's the 15.3. CW is the 18.3. It's probably the way each other, and then I'm going to get CW uh, back out the unstiffened uh, web length. Okay. So when I work out that, I get uh, 13,336 uh, millimeters squared for the effective cross section area. Okay. And then so the cross section resistance from that. So if we got that, so. I'll do it over here, keep them all the inside. Cross section resistance. Okay, so cross section resistance. Uh, NCRD uh, is going to be the effective area times our fly over gamma M1. Okay, so that was um, from this equation here, 611. Okay, so we're into 6.2.4 and equation 611. And 611. You record 3.1.1. Part one, part one. So it's 13,336. FY, we said was 275. And gamma 1 is 1. And we, when we uh, work that out, we get uh, 3667. 10 to the power of 3 newtons or uh, 3667 kilonewtons uh, in CRD. Okay, so that's the cross section resistance. So now the cross section resistance of, the, of it done, so that's step two. Uh, so step three now is going to get the flexural uh, lateral buckling of, of the section. Okay, so the flexural lateral buckling of the section. Uh, we're going into section, uh, sorry, parts one into 6.3 of, um, this is in EN 1993, part one, part one, okay. So just make sure we keep an eye on which of the codes we're in. Um, so in that, so this is a, a similar to the other examples that we did. All the time, we're always looking for the demand divided by the capacity that's less than or equal to one. In this case, because of class four section, we're moving on to um, equation 6.48. Okay, so 6.48, where we have the cross-section resistance, which is effective area times the uh, nominal unit strength, multiplied by the reduction factor. So we have to go through the steps now to work out the, the reduction factor for, for the member. Yeah, okay. what do we do? So we, we go to the buckling curve again. This is uh, EN 1993, part one, part one. Um, and we have to get the normal ascendance value. So the normal ascendance value is um, A effective over FY, time for uh, divided by NCR, um, where NCR is the elastic critical force for the relevant buckling mode uh, that we're looking at. So we have to find out what that is. Um, and we also can find out that by the normal cylinders value being the cylinders value divided by the reference cylinders value. Okay, so um, we're going to buckle in about two two axes. So we have buckling about the, the major or the minor axis in there. Okay, so that's the minor axis around this one, ZZ. And then the YY -Y is somewhere down here. Yeah. And CY is the distance down to the, down to the major axis. Now we know that the buckling is going to happen about the minor axis before the major axis once the same um, normal, same critical length for both of them. So we're just going to check the minor axis, okay? So we, we're just going to check about the minor axis. So check about ZZ. As this will be uh, more uh, critical than 
and those. Why, why? Okay. So we have the the, the critical buckling length. It's three meters, which is obviously three thousand millimeters. Okay. Um, we also have the uh, radius duration from the blue book, uh, which was uh, seven point four three centimeters. We got that straight from the from the blue book. The radius duration about the about the minor axis. So then the normalized slenderness value. Slenderness about that's that Z. What's that Z? Uh, it's going to be equal to the uh, the length, which is three thousand millimeters, divided by the radius duration, which is seventy four point three. So the slenderness value for about the minor axis is forty point one, and then the normal slenderness value is equal to the slenderness value divided by the reference value. Okay, so normal sinus value is 40.1. The reference fitness, uh, value is uh, 93.9 times epsilon, and epsilon is 0.9 at 2. Okay, so that's the same as what we've done previously. That's epsilon down there. So we have a normal sinus value here uh, of 0.46. Okay, so that's. Uh, So now we have the normal slenderness value uh, in there. We want to use these equations that are in here, so we need to step through all of this. So we have the normal slenderness value, which is uh, which is for here, um, in there. We that can allow us to put in here normal slenderness value. We need to work out what the imperfection factor is, um, and uh, once we have the imperfection factor, we can work out what the phi value is, and we can then we can work out what the reduction factor is. So we can see that the imperfection factor, we have it's table 6.1, gives imperfection, imperfection values for various different uh, buckling curves. So we have to decide which buckling curve is. So we go to table 6.2 to decide which buckling curve we go to uh, in Eurocode uh, 3, part 1, part 1. And table 6.2 here, if we look down near the bottom, we have T sections. So there's a T section. And that tells us we use buckling curve C. Uh, when we have S275 steel. So no matter uh, which axis we're buckling about, we use buckling curve C. Okay, so we're going to take that down here uh, into, our, into our, our notes here. Uh, so table uh, 6.2 implies use buckling curve uh, C for a T-section. Okay. And then if we're using buckling curve C, we can see here that then, so that's table 6.2 in your code 3, part 1, part 1. So that means the table 6.1 uh, implies uh, the reduction factor alpha is equal to 0 0.49 for buckling curve C. Okay. So now we have everything we need. Um, so if we look at this uh, equation 6.94, phi, so we have everything we need for phi. So phi equals 0.5 to 1 plus the reduction factor, or sorry, the imperfection factor 0.49. So this is about the z-axis um, times the normalized sinus value that we just worked out on the previous page, which is 0.46. Minus 0.2. Plus 0.46 squared. Okay, so we plug all the numbers uh, in there and we get uh, 0.66695 or something like that uh, out there for the for for the phi value. And then this uh, reduction factor about the minor about the major axis for the lateral buckling. Sorry, about the minor axis for the lateral buckling as uh, one over phi. Z plus square root of phi Z squared minus normal sinus value that's squared. And that's equation uh, 649, which just wrote above us there. So put that in there 1 over 0 0.6695 
plus the square root of 0.6695 squared minus 0.46 squared. Let me work that out. And that's 0.864, and that's less than or equal to 1. Okay, because we can't have a reduction factor any greater than 1. So then the booked in resistance, uh, booked in resistance in the ZRD, is going to be equal to the reduction factor times the cross section resistance, which is the effective cross section area, times Fy, all times gamma M1. So the reduction factor that this worked out is 0.864. The effective cross section area we worked out um, uh, previously, which was 13336. Fy is 275 newton per meter squared. That's going to be 3168 by 10 to the power of 3 newtons. So in the ZRD, it's equal to 3168 kilonewtons. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the lateral buckling uh, about the minor axis. That's 3168. So, um, so the member might buckle about the minor axis, but also we have two other buckling modes to uh, check for as well. We also have to and uh, check for torsional buckling and uh, torsional flexural buckling as well. So we'll do uh, torsional buckling next. For torsional buckling next, we have to go to SN001, the guidance SN001 to help us here. Same as what we did for the angle section. So for the T section, we have to do the same thing. We're going to use this formula here, uh, which is the rate of duration, I naught squared, uh, times shear modulus, the torsional constant, Pi, uh, pi squared E Young's modulus, IW the warping constant, IT uh, distortion constant uh, again uh, in there. So we can uh, put the sorry LT L L is the the length the buckling length sorry the buckling length uh, squared on the bottom line. So we know the torsion constant from the blue book. We know the warping constant from the blue book. We know the length is 3,000 millimeters. We know the Young's modulus is 210,000 newtons per millimeter squared. We know the shear modulus is 80,770. So really the only thing we need to work out here is the radius duration, which is um, squared, uh, which is given here. So we can work that out because we know uh, those values from the, from the blue book here as well. Okay, so I know. So I know it's uh, squared uh, equals I Y squared plus I Z squared um, plus Y naught squared plus Z naught squared. Okay, so one of those values, so I um, I Y, this uh, the rate of generation about the major axis, that's straight from the blue book, uh, which is 78.2 millimeters squared i z straight from the blue book 74.8 millimeters squared uh plus uh y naught so what's the words y naught and z naught so we'll draw the section up here and so it's a t section in there we said that the neutral axis for um z is through there and y is somewhere uh, down here Okay, so we can see here that y naught uh, is zero. So because the uh, it's a symmetrical section about z z, so y naught is zero. So put in zero there squared, and then z naught. Well, what's z naught? We talk about what z naught is. Uh, so z naught. So this is uh, C y that we said here. Uh, in in the blue book, which is also equal to uh, z naught. Sorry, it's not equal to Z naught. Uh, CY is to the top, to there. And Z naught is from the center of the flange uh, down to the Y, Y axis. That's Z naught in there. Okay, so what's that? So Z naught is equal to CY 
minus the thickness of the flange divided by two. See y is straight from the blue book. 60.9 minus the thickness of the flange, uh, which is 29.2 divided by two. So z naught is equal to 46.3 millimeters. Okay. So put that in there. Uh, 46.3 millimeters. Okay, so that's uh, Z, Z, um, Z naught. So that's, uh, so then I, I naught, so that's gonna be the square root of all of that. So I naught, so if I work up all that, I naught is equal to 11, um, 117.7 uh, millimeters uh, in there. Okay, so we put that in, so we have I, I naught squared, so we can get all the rest in there, so C, R, T. Uh, is equal to one over i naught squared into g, the torsion constant, plus pi squared e, the warping constant, all over lt squared. Okay, so that's uh, that's equation one from s in zero zero one, which equals one over one hundred and seventeen point seven squared. Uh, G is A G seven seven uh, O uh, I T, which is torsion constant, uh, which you got directly from the the blue book, which is three hundred and twenty by ten to the power of four, uh, plus pi squared three point one four squared times two hundred ten thousand newtons per minute squared, and then the Warping constant is eight um, seven two five by sorry ten to the power of six, and then the length is three thousand. Excuse me, three thousand millimeters squared. So that's in CR and T. Is 18850 uh, by 10 to the power 3 newtons. NCRT is 18850 kilonewtons. Okay, so that's the critical uh, elastic torsion and buckling capacity for the, for the section. So we're going to use that now to work out what the normal stiffness value because normal stiffness value is always the cross section resistance divided by the critical buckling uh, resistance. The elastic critical buckle resistance uh, in there. So with that 18850, we know what the cross section resistance is that we've just uh, worked out previously. So we'll just put a little square on that one because it's going to be one that we bring forward. We worked out the buckle in there and we worked out the cross section resistance back uh, here, 3667 uh, three, kilonewtons. Yeah. So the normal sinus value for the torsion is equal to the square root of um, the cross-section resistance, which is the vector of area times Fy, all over in CRT, which is the square root of uh, 3667. So we worked that out for in, in kilonewtons. All over what we just worked out there, 181850. That's going to give me 0.441. And then we can go through and, and, and basically work out the um, phi value, um, 0.657, for the work it out uh, there, but that's basically equation um, 649 from this equation here, uh, 649, that equation, so it's the same equations we're using uh, again, 
and then so that's the torsion, then the reduction factor. Uh, again, uh, using the same equations, uh, 0.875. That's from equation uh, 649. And then, so now we can work out what the uplift resistance is for the torsion. And the RB uh, is equal to this uh, reduction factor times the cross section area. So that's uh, 0.875, so it's 87.5% of the cross-section resistance, which is 3667, 1 over 1, so that's 3208 kilonewtons. Okay, so we've got the uh, torsional buckling resistance is 3208 uh, kilonewtons. So put a box around that because that one's one that we need going forward. So that's uh, the second step. Uh, sorry, that's that's the fourth step, which is torsional buckling resistance. Next one now we need to work out is the torsional flexor uh, buckling. Okay, so this is the last one. So the uh, flexor torsional buckling uh, in there. So again, we go to SN001 for that. Um, and there's a critical axial load um, for the flexor torsional buckling mode. Um, it's the smallest root of this uh, long equation. But if we have a cross section that's symmetric about the y y axis, and then the critical then the then the critical axial load may be got from this. If the cross section is symmetrical about the z z axis, then we replace all of these in CRYs uh, with in CRZs instead. So everywhere there's an in CRY, we just replace it with that and put an in CRZ. So our section is uh, symmetrical about the um, about the minor axis, yeah, because we have. A T section so Y Y Z Z okay so it's about the minor axis so we're going to use um, so we're going to use equation uh, 5 in S N 001 but replace in C R Y with in CRZ as uh, symmetric about ZZ axis. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So we have um, N CRTF equals I naught squared divided by two times I Y squared plus I Z squared all into this uh, long equation, so in CRZ. Okay, so we're putting all these um, anywhere where there's an in CRY. Oops. Oops, that one, sorry. Okay, anywhere where there's an in CRZ, or in CRY, sorry, we're going to put an in CRZ, so in these, these three places. Okay, and CRZ plus CRT. Uh, minus square root of in CRZ plus in CRT squared minus. Uh, four times in CRZ, in CRT, all times, so this would be all square root, uh, all times, we have to put it in there, so I run out of space there, I Y squared plus I Z squared, all over I naught squared. Okay, so what's, what goes into all that equation? Well, it's all the numbers that we've uh, plugged in before. We have all these numbers. Uh, so that I naught value we've worked out previously, that's the 117.7 value. I Y value, uh, we've worked out that previously, that was the 78.2, sorry, that's straight from the blue book. The I Z value, straight from the blue book as well, 74.8. In CRZ uh, value is, uh, we just worked that out um, back a few pages ago, 
17,790. So it's a critical uh, bump in about the Z, uh, critical elastic bump in about the Z axis. No, we didn't work out that. Sorry, we need to work that out for you. We need to work that out because um, we didn't work it out. We worked out the one at the NCRT. We actually worked this one out in CRT uh, in there, which was 18850. Okay, so NCRZ, how do we get NCRZ? So let's have a look at that. Um, so we know that the normalized in this value about the Z axis um, is a something around equal to cross section resistance divided by uh, the critical book or the critical elastic resistance uh, in there. So if I, I resolve out that equation, basically square both sides and move the NCRZ up to the up above the line, uh, then I will get um, the effective area times FY. Sorry, effective area times FY all over normal sinus value. Um, so NCRZ, and we know the effective area times FY. That was three six six seven kilonewtons. It's kilonewtons all over the normal sinus value, and we had the normal sinus value previously. It was zero point four five uh, squared. So that may give me one seven seven nine oh kilonewtons. Okay, so that's the that's to work out what the NCRZ value was. To plug in there, and CRZ seventeen thousand seven hundred and ninety. In CRT we have uh, eighteen uh, eight five zero. In CRZ again was seventeen seven nine zero. In CRT eighteen eight five zero. Uh, we have one hundred and seventeen point seven on the bottom. YZ, um, which is the second one to worry about the major axis or sorry minor axis. 74.8 squared and about the minor axis, which was uh, 78.2. Okay, so we put all those in, in there, is that equation? And then we can work out what the NCR uh, uh, TF is. So the critical elastic um, buckling for the torsion flexion mode. Okay, so once I plug in all those values in there, NCR TF. Uh, we're going to get 1300 129 uh, kilonewtons. Okay, so again, we know that the normal sinus value is always the cross section resistance, so in this case, A effective times FY divided by uh, in uh, CRTF. And here we have the 3670 as a cross section resistance divided by 1329. 13,129, uh, and that gives us 0.528. And we know that the um, uh, the imperfection factor is going to be the same as it was for, for the other one, so it's curve C. Because it's all this curve C, no matter which um, axis we're going around for the T section. And then we, again, we can put, plug all the numbers in, um, and we'll get um, the values out. So that's just gone into equation 649 again, and the normal sinus value, I'm sorry, the reduction factor uh, in there. We get 0.827 again back into the equation 649. Okay, so just not working them all up, uh, individually uh, here on the screen because um, the same same equations that we're, we're using every single time. And so what's the buckling resistance for uh, torsion and flexure uh, in there? Um, so it's the, obviously the reduction factor for torsion and flexure uh, times the cross-section resistance, which is the cross-section area. In this case, the effective cross-section area because it's class 4 section, uh, divided by gamma in uh, 1. So we have 0 0.827. And we have 3667 kilonewtons here divided by 1. So in in uh, B uh, T F R D 
this case it's 3032 okay so then step uh, so that's the the torsion flexion um buckling resistance okay so we have the torsion flexural this is the torsional flexural buckling resistance uh, we've also worked out uh, the torsional buckling resistance Okay, so we worked at the torsional buckling resistance, and um, we've also worked out what the um, lateral, lateral flexural uh, buckling resistance. Okay, so we have the three of them worked out, and in fact, we saw the overall buckling resistance is going to be the smaller of the three of them, so smaller of this one, which is 3168 of uh, this one, torsional buckling resistance, which is 3208, or of the last one, torsional flexural buckling resistance, which is uh, 3032. Okay, so uh, what's step we on now? Step six. So step six is overall buckling resistance in BRD. Which is equal to so which is equal to going to the minimum of all of these ones. So in B, Z, R, D, uh, I'm bringing it down new line, sorry. Discussion there. Okay, so in B, R, D is the minimum. Uh, in B, Z, R, D, in B, T, R, D, and in B, torsional flexural buckling, R, D. So put them all in there. Uh, the minimum, so 3168 was that one. Uh, 3208 was the torsional buckling. And the uh, torsional flexural buckling, just above us there, 3032. And um, which one of those is the critical one? Well, it's the smallest one, so it's 3032. So it's going to be 3032 uh, kilonewtons. So NBRD is 3032 kilonewtons. So, in other words, what uh, the, the mode of uh, failure, if we exceeded the capacity, the buckling capacity, it would buckle about a uh, torsion flexure buckling first, uh, which would be. A load of um, three or three two uh, kilonewtons. So I suppose when you, if you have a member with a, with a with an applied force on it, then we need to check the applied force uh, against the uh, capacity. So that would be the seventh as step uh, here. We would check the utilization ratio. For buckling, which is going to be the demand on the member. Divided by the buckling capacity. Okay. So in this uh, question, I didn't give you a demand, but your demand comes from comes from your structural analysis. So when you do your truss analysis, you work out what the forces in each of the members, uh, and that compression force is the NED uh, from your structural analysis. And then whatever T section you pick, you go through these steps to design it to work out the capacity of the section. Uh, and in this case, the capacity of the section is three or uh, three two kilonewtons. Okay, so we have to make sure that the demand, the force uh, acting on the on the uh, member, the compression force acting on the member, doesn't exceed uh, three or three two um, kilonewtons, uh, because the utilization ratio always has to be obviously less than or equal to one, or it would, uh, it would end up failing. So that's the um, that's the example. That's an example done of a of a of a T section. The example is very similar to um, the example for. The angle section, however, what made it a little bit more complicated in this scenario is because we had a class uh, four section. Um, just happened that the section I picked was a class four section, and therefore we had to use an effective cross section area. So that added an extra step, I suppose, in the design. Instead of just using the overall cross section area of the section, I had to work out what the effective cross section area of the section was. And every all the rest of the steps were the same. 
Um, the only other thing I think we changed uh, was that the um, for the buckling capacity that we used um, that instead of using the NCR uh, Y, uh, when we use SN001, we use NCR uh, Z in that in that formula. I think it's equation five in that in in, um, in SN001, and that, that everything else was very similar. So that's the that's the fifth and, and final uh, example um, in the series of examples for compression members, uh, which would be enough that you need for your um, design of your your truss.